Hey everybody, Space Goats here. Hope everyone's having a good day. I had a pretty good day. Outside, digging a trench for my new power line running to my mining shed. And it's a little warm outside. So, I think I got a little sunburn. But, you know, who cares? But, this is going to be the final video for the ITX build. I know I've kind of stretched this out over, over several videos, but there's lots of lots of little pieces and parts to this to this whole case so but this here is our motherboard I don't know how well light whatever is affecting it but let's start putting this little motherboard together real quick It'll take a few minutes so I will uh, be right back with you guys when I have the uh, motherboard assembled with the RAM and hard drive and everything else. Okay guys, I got the uh, CPU put in here real quick. Um, one of the things I was going to show is I don't know if, if how many people have actually used a not to a cooler, but sometimes these coolers mount a little differently than than other coolers. So what you're going to have to do is parts and pieces out of here we're going to have to take off the back plate on this one and install a different plate I'm sorry not install a different plate but the hold down for the other cooler doesn't have to come off there I gotta find the right ones here in the box. It should be should be let's see which one it is real quick. Let me find my little directions here. I gotta find the right numbers. I find the right numbers. Let's see, which one was it? It was... And four would be the dark gray ones, which, okay. Some of this little pain in the butt, but... They're not too bad. They do make one, one of these coolers, I don't, I don't think it's this one here, but they do make one that is, is AMD only specific, so it, don't have, it doesn't have all the extra extra parts and pieces so what we're going to have to do is take these off and we leave the board on this piece of foam that does not drop the plate off the bag Get those out of the way. Then you're going to have sometimes these plastic things. Are good bit of taper to them. I like to put the taper down. Equalizes the pressure on the motherboard a little better, so it doesn't uh, affect. Even eat levels of pressure on the motherboard. So we got those. We got our long screws. And these little plates attach something like that. Actually. Actually, I think they're supposed to go like this. Looking at the good old pictures. Let's 
something like like this. Ah, there we go. I wish they would just come out with some sort of standard on these coolers that everyone has to follow. But every every company has their own mounting. I don't know if they do that just to justify the added cost sometimes or what they do, but just like that, and then this is gonna sit right on top of these two studs right here, and this cooler is gonna have a built-in spring. It's a uh, retained spring, you know, screw, so you don't have to worry about it coming out, but one on both sides, and that's it. I'll be right back after you have to get the cooler installed. Okay, guys, we got the our brackets put on. So, I like thermal grizzly paste. And this one little tube, is, eh, it's a little expensive. This is a, uh, I don't remember how many grams this is, but this is a big, a big tube. So, we come in here, we put our little dollop of paste on there, more than enough. A lot of times I like to go ahead and spread it around, but I'm not going to right now. It may or may not be taking this one back off, so hopefully we're good. So, and also what I like to do is I will tuck my cable up underneath inside here, inside the heat pipes and stuff, so that it'll add a little, uh, clean up the cables a little bit. And we will come in here real carefully on my long reach screwdriver, get that one started. Come over here in between these fan blades. You gotta be careful not to not to bend these fan blades too much. Uh, come on now. Oh, a stinky one. There it goes. Now they're both started. I will give them a couple two or three cranks back and forth until they until they seat. I don't like to it's not good to tighten one side completely then the other side so you just back and forth. And they will just stop the way these are set up they've got like a hard stop to them there it was so that one's tight that one's tight yeah it's not going anywhere this right here is our cpu fan header so let's uh flip this around plug that in like that another well, cpu cooler is installed piece of cake I'm not going anywhere i will also when i do this i like to get a flashlight out hopefully it's not too bright on you guys and i want to see i want to see squeeze out on my thermal paste all the way around i don't know if I can get that under, let me see if I can, right there in the camera. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It might be too bright. But you can see this thermal paste squeezed out just a little bit around the perimeter of that pad. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. That basically tells me I got a good, a good even layer of paste. So, our next thing is going to be our hard drive real quick. And I'll... Get that opened up and we'll be right back. Alrighty guys. This right here is our slot for our M.2 drive. This is the plate. We got a little little thermal pad up here to go on the on the hard drive or the SSD M.2 drive. So and this be our M.2. This is a ADATA SX82 Pro two terabyte and they actually have the memory modules just a double layer of them on on this particular chip 
I've used quite a few of these ADATA SSDs, M.2 drives, and, and I've been pretty happy with them. Uh, maybe not necessarily the fastest, but I've never, you know, knock on wood, I've never had one fail. So, I've had really good luck with them. So, there's our pad. Got to try to get this thing lined up. With our hole down. There we go. We've got our tiny little screws here. I don't know why they make these stinking screws so small on this stuff, but... Looks like they did put a little bit of Loctite on the on the screw, so that's kind of a nice nice feature. A little snug turn. A little snug turn, and that's it. I can have my RAM out of the box here. Well, what am I doing? This is some. Uh, I'll explain in the last video, we got some Corsair Avengers DDR4. This is a 16 gig kit, 3600 megahertz. Click, click. Click, click. And there we go, man. There, that's easy as that. All this work to make this case for about an hour worth of build time. Maybe a little longer. You can do some little cable management and I gotta make a, make a little cable. But that's pretty much about it when it comes to the motherboard part of it. So let me get set up for installation of the motherboard and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, everybody. I got the uh, motherboard sitting in place here. I had a little bit of an issue as I was I was looking at it, and I was going to uh, put it in here. And just before I turned the video back on, I noticed the uh, this particular motherboard has this has these plates on the back side. On the back side of this plate, there's some thermal pads in here for the uh, looks like it's for the VRM and whatnot for the back side of the motherboard. So it adds a little extra. A little extra cooling you know was, but one of my screws right here on this pad just stuck out on this pad ever so slightly and it was rubbing on the back of the motherboard so I had to uh, relocate or locate some more screws and that we are ready to uh, go ahead and stick this motherboard in and well if I get a screw to start, uh, but there's but there's plastic in that one. Let me get this one first. There we go. Get that one first. Let me get my tap. Yeah, I see a piece of plastic in there. How nice the uh, brass inserts are! You gotta really be careful with them and make sure you got all the all the plastic cleaned out of the holes, or you will not be able to get these little screws to go in the hole. There we go. A couple more here. Got one down here. And this is the fun one. It's in a dark hole. Uh, huh. There it goes. Alrighty. Alright, motherboard is installed. Now we'll move on to the uh, graphics card in just a second. So now that the motherboard is installed, our next step, what I'd like to go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and hook up our PCIe riser. 
and it just clicks right into the slot, runs across the top. And then, one of the fun things is, is going to be our cables. Now, one of the things is going to be a little tough, and it always is. I mean, I can hook this up beforehand, but cable in there. I will throw a couple of zip ties on this here here in a little while. But I'll zip tie this one down something like this. And this is the one that this is why I went ahead and get custom cables when I do these computers because I need to have a little extra room. And what I'll do is I'll stuff this cable kind of down along this edge and roll it back on itself. And hopefully Get this thing to plug in without too much headache and hassle sometimes it fights you and sometimes if you get lucky it'll just go in the first shot and i think i just heard a click yes i did look at that went down one time so now like i said i will throw some zip ties on this cable but I will kind of carefully stuff it down in the hole here let me I got one cable got hung up on the clip there it goes all right now it's down in here so if I need to reach down in here with my finger and hit the clip to release the power the motor power I can something like that I'll go ahead and put a zip tie on it here here later I'm not gonna do it right now I'll put one here and I'll kind of ball this up and I'll wrap the zip tie kind of out the bottom of the case over here on the end where you can see it and I'll, I'll clamp this all up real nice and neat kind of help with the airflow too so so we're hooked up here, we're hooked up there. Our other thing is going to be the GPU. Now, when you're putting the GPU on, there's these little locks look here and here, and this top one slides up and down a little bit. So if I get my other bit here with my handy dandy eye fix it, loosen this up which allows this thing here to slide up and down a little bit actually I'm just going to take this top one completely off the bottom one we will loosen actually something like that now we have our Asus 1660 Super Phoenix card and make sure that's down and it will just ever so slightly squeeze in here just like so And click it's in place so this here goes back over the deal here we got our little lock threads in hold the little plate down that's it carefully tighten the bottom one up here a little bit And our GPU is installed. Now, the GPU cable, there's just enough room with this particular card. I actually have this card on one of my other systems to carefully slot it. Hopefully, I'm getting this. 
on the camera and plug it in and then you can slot it right down that edge right there I'll stick a zip tie on the bottom of it and kind of zip tie it to the power cable right here and that's it but she's uh she's mostly done only thing I got left to do is gonna be the power supply cable and I gotta make a special cable for that so I'll be right back with you and show you what I'm talking about all right guys this is the top of our case and this is the little cable that I'm gonna need to install our power button now a power button is just a momentary switch it has a couple of inputs for uh, some LED lights on it but we have to run it from here and the little cable is going to come in and it ties in right down in here on this motherboard there's a little spot down there so I just got a little a little cable so what we're going to do is make a custom little cable I've started doing this with most of any build that I do anymore I have found a little kit here and these are 2.54 millimeter connectors so what I like to do is I'll come over here and I'll grab one of these which is a uh, four pin straight connector I'll use there's a little arrow on it and that little arrow I use the wire that has the stripe on it and that will be my positive LED line the next one over there will be my negative LED line and these two on the end are gonna be for your power switch it don't matter what direction they go on but I will wire them straight with this little connector and then when I plug it in I know that this little arrow goes to my positive LED light and that's it the other end of it will be wired into the switch um, on the bay, on the end of it, you'll have a positive LED, your negative LED, and these two here will be for your momentary switch. And they got tiny little screws. Stick the wire into the, the little hole, clamp it down, done. So let me uh, strip these wires off, and we'll uh, make us a a little custom little wire for our power button and LED lights. So when I make these cables, I hope you guys can see this, and. It, if you go back and watch one of my other videos, I got this, oops, I dropped it. Got a little bitty connector here. And this wire that I bought is four wire, you know, it's all attached or together, whatever. You go in there like this. I like to hold if I can, get my big dumb finger to work. Hold that in there, and I'll go ahead and curl the tang that holds the insulation part of the wire so it's kind of sort of already sort of attached and then when you crimp it you got to be careful because uh, wow I can't get my fingers to work you gotta be careful because when you stick it in here you don't want to crimp the locking mechanism for the the uh, connector itself and that's it it goes on there really simple try to keep them somewhat level and uh, they're not perfect but good enough for for what it's for and that's it it just takes a few minutes to put these together so let me get the other connectors done and then we will hook up the button here in just a second well there we go we are all wired up so what I would like to do and just for peace of mind see if I can do this on on cam is what I will come over here and I'll just do a quick little continuity check so I know that this first one should be my LED LED and I want to do a continuity check on these two pins right here so as long as I can see my meter if I hit the button Get a reading. 
Unless I got my wires backwards. There it goes. There it goes. Alrighty, that's it. So, I will put the front of this case on real quick. Actually, let me install my little power buttons. Let me just real quick. So, we drop in here like such. The little ring goes up inside like such. And we'll screw this thing on. So there's just enough room for this thing to screw on inside here. That's, that's a good thing. And let me see where it is a little tool here. If it works. A little old and wore out. A little, little turn on it. Just so it doesn't move around too much. Like that. And there we go. Power button is in. So what we do now is we got a little computer and the little power button real carefully size up in here like this. Now when you do these power buttons one of the things to remember is there's a bunch of them out there on the market but they're too tall and I end up finding this one uh, I'll have a link in the description for it and it's actually almost the perfect button and that's it now I know this is my power a power for my LED so it plugs in right here if I did everything right there it plugs in if I did my if I did my job right this thing is about ready to uh, fire up for the first time now I don't have a screen screen capture card on this on my test bench but what I will do is I'll I'll go ahead and let me go ahead and put these screws in and I well yeah, be good at if I put the screw in the right spot I was screwing the wrong hole. Oops. That one's snug. That one's snug. Hopefully. There it goes. A little snug down here. Now these bottom ones are a little difficult with this bottom plate on, but I wanted the bottom plate on to make sure everything stays squared and stays lined up. That one's in. And one more. my fingers at work here. And that's it. Now, I have not actually started this. I have not turned it on. I haven't pushed a button. I haven't done anything to it. So, I know this video is probably going to be a little longer than I was anticipated. I have been doing the start and the stopping and all that good stuff. So hopefully I did my part and it will start up and run. 
as soon as I find the cable. So I plug the cable into the back. I plug cable into the power. Rut row. I see lights. Well, we got power. Let me uh, let me plug in a HDMI cable, and I will see if I can carefully turn you guys around without showing you everything in my room and myself and everything else. All right, that's the computer. Now, power button on. She's running. GPU is running. It'll look like my monitor's turned on though. Hmm. Now the monitor's on. And that's it she's up and running and we have it's still going through its thing there you go install boot media all right guys I think that's gonna be it for this, uh, this little build series all I gotta do is install an OS put the panels back on the on it you know side panel top panel and do a little overclocking or to do a little uh, optimization in the bios not necessarily overclocking and that'll be it all right guys until next time i'll see y'all in the next video